Hey guys, um, been a while since I did a video, uh, but um, this arrived today, um, today of all days, would you believe it, the 75th anniversary of D-Day, 6th of June 2019, um, and uh, excuse the last video which was a bit sort of out of the ordinary as regards uh, Comic Con, um, I just thought I'd put it up there basically for all you sci-fi geeks out there in the modelling community. Um, <clears throat> I have to say it was mine and my friend Brittany's first experience of actually going to a London Comic Con. Um, we both thoroughly enjoyed it, including uh, her friend uh, Charlie, uh, who was a lovely lad, I have to say, by the way. Um, and uh, I will definitely be going again because I think there's another one in October. Uh, so I know my friend Britt is actually planning on going there. Um, I am too. Uh, admittedly, I didn't have an outfit this time, although she looked superb in her uh, Harley Quinn outfit, I have to say. Um, and uh, it was just a generally lovely atmosphere at the show. Um, plenty to see and do. Um, and as I say, with people done up in their outfits and some of the effort that went into it, I have to say, was pretty damn amazing. Um, and uh, yeah, it was it was a thoroughly good day out, I have to say. And um, after the show, we met a couple of lads who uh, befriended Brittany and Charlie before they got in. Um, I went ahead because uh, unfortunately, I basically had the ordinary general ticket, and of course. Bless her heart, she was worrying so silly, silly in the morning um, that I wasn't going to get in on time and be stuck in a queue while they went in because uh, she got a priority ticket. But there you go, you live and learn. But no, it was a thoroughly enjoyable day out and Brittany herself, well, she was like a kitty in a candy store, bless her heart. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm planning on going again in October, so you might see another little sort of mini video on that, so we'll see. Anyway, getting on to the subject in hand. Um, as you know, today, uh, 6th of June 2019, is the 75th anniversary of Operation Overlord, the invasion of Europe, um, which happened on the 6th of June 1944. Uh, well, technically speaking, it started in the early hours of the 5th. Um, well, just after midnight with Operation um, Pegasus on Pegasus Bridge. Uh, then from then on in, that was the start of the D-Day invasion. Um, and this was a major aircraft that was used in the dropping the paratroops ahead of the um, other troops in their uh, LCVs, uh, etc. And I do have a family connection to D-Day because my late old cleric was on one of the landing craft retrieving the casualties on some of the beaches. So uh, it's a particular um, day of pride for us in the Avery family, uh, particularly my cousin Susan, Samantha, who lives over in Australia, and Patricia, uh, who was their dad. Um, so, yeah, very proud family we are today. And we always remember him on the anniversary of D-Day, me particularly. Uh, so there you go. Anyway... I will stop waffling on. Um, as I say, I got this through ironically today of all days. Um, it is Trumpeter's Hobby Boss C-47A Skytrain, or as we all know it, the Dakota. Uh, it was the most famously used uh, transport during the Second World War. It was not only used by um, the United States, but us as well in the Royal Air Force and uh, some other countries which took part in the Allied in action against the Nazis uh, in Europe and obviously abroad in Burma in the Pacific as well, uh, which was used out there. Um, you can get numerous kits of these, particularly the new retooled Airfix kits. Uh, they do three versions, which is the D-Day version. Uh, they do the Royal Air Force version. And I think they do a Dan Air version as well. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised come the 75th anniversary of the Berlin Air if they'll bring out another one. So we will see. Um, 
as I say, it was one of the most widely produced transport aircraft during the Second World War, and a lot of them were used in the founding of all the airlines after the war finished. Um, and it's still being used in some parts of the world as a stalwart um, transport uh, for cargo as well. I think Air Atlantique were one of the last over here to use it, or well, they're still using them, but we shall see. And apparently there was also a turbine engine version which came out as well. Uh, so there you go. Anyway, getting on with the subject in hand, as you can see, is a particular illustration of a C-47 in a particular D-Day, typical D-Day scheme, uh, which is one of the options in this kit. It's quite a big old box. It's in 172nd scale. Um, it comes with a length of 270 millimetres and the wingspan is 402.5 millimetres. Um, kit number is 8 seven two six four and if you want to freeze frame that you can you've got the box arts illustration on the side there and on the opposite side you've got the alternate color scheme that comes with this kit which is of the chinese air force so there you go 103 squadron of transport group uh, which is an overall um i think matte olive olive drab i think so there you go, and without further ado, oh, oh, and then on the other side you've got the D-Day scheme version with the D-Day stripes. Um, unfortunately it doesn't tell you where this was based, so or what unit it was, but there you go. But I've actually got some aftermarket coming in for this kit, including an aftermarket Beckel sheet, which features particularly of interest to me, um the variant which was used um out of greenham common air force base over in newbury um and the reason i'm doing that one is of uh, because there was a famous photograph of i inspecting some of the paratroops at greenham common on the day of d-day um which i think everybody can remember in some way or another uh, so that's why I've plumbed for an aftermarket scheme and obviously I used to go to the air tattoo that used to be held there but sadly it, I mean the place itself was known for the longest runway in Europe but sadly that was all dug up and the grass has grown over it. There still are parts of the airfield still in existence and apparently they've only just recently refurbished the old control tower that was there. So there you go. Um... Let's open the box anyway, because I'm waffling on again. There's your uh, colour call-outs, which you can see there, which you've got the D-Day version. And there's your colours in Mr. Hobby, Vallejo, Model Master, Tamiya and Humbro. Uh, so you've got a variation there. And then on the opposite side, you've got the Chinese Air Force version of the 103, 103 Squadron Transport Group. Again, same uh, colour call-outs as well. A little pamphlet there uh, for a variant that's coming out or come out in 148th of their Hawk T1 from the Red Arrows, which looks particularly interesting. So hmm, that might be one I might get. And then on the back, you've got the other various kits. You've got the one that we're featuring here. Um, you've got the Russian ASU 57 Airborne Tank Destroyer. And then you've got the French pre-dreadnought battleship Condorcet, I think. Is how you pronounce it. Might got that wrong. There you go. Right. Without further ado, um, you've got one, two, three, four, five sprues, and then obviously you've got your cockpit panel in there. Edge brass set. As you can see here, and the instruction sheet, most importantly here, and obviously you've got the D-Day version on the front. A uh, little bit of a guide there for the building and painting of the actual aircraft, and then obviously the metal for applying the decals, and it's in Chinese as well. There's your various symbols during the process of the build, you can see there. Kit number 87264 in 172nd scale. And then obviously you've got your sprue tree there to check all your parts. And then there's your decal sheet. And then the first uh, part of the assembly is the interior uh, with the bulkheads, etc. 
this looks like a rear bulkhead. Um, or am I wrong? That might be the navigator station. I don't know. Uh, yes. And then you've got the bulk, uh, bulkhead for the cockpit there. The assembly of the actual uh, cockpit seats, which you can see here. And the navigator seat. <coughs> And then you've got the assembly of the control panel and then you've got control levers there for the throttles. Um, so that might be H brass. And then various members of everything going there. It's a pity you've got all this detail down here because you're not going to see it once the actual fuse large is all buttoned up. But you know it's there anyway. Um, next process. If I can find this pamphlet. Bear with me is the rear deck area which you can see there where you've got the seats for the paratroops which go in etc and then you've got the desk there i don't know what this is but it's part of a sub assembly there control levers go in um and then you put your windows in your clear glass windows in that's the above part for the lighting i think um, there's some nice level of rib detail in there, and then that's for the opposite side. Okay, for fuselage. And then basically you button up the fuselage with the interior. Um, I think that's the housing for the tail wheel. Um, then you've got the engine day cells, the interior of that, and then the undercarriage bays which are assembled. And again, there's a nice level of detail on the actual bulkheads, which you can see here. Air intake goes on the top part of the wing. You button up the wings. Okay. And then the assembly of the undercarriage, which goes in. Uh, sadly, on this kit, yeah, there's no weighted wheels, so I'll probably have to get them in as resin parts. And then basically what you do next is assemble the Pratt & Whitney engines. Air intake, air filter, in, air filter goes in and onto the bottom of the actual engine housing. Um, that goes to the back of the firewall and then you've got the engine cover which goes over the Pratt & Whitney engine. Okay. Now the next process coming to the final with sub-assemblies. Uh, you put the um, above um, engine, uh, I should imagine panel which goes on the top of the clear perspex. Uh, put the clear perspex onto the cockpit. And then assemble the rear uh, tail uh, planes, uh, put them onto the fuselage, and then the fuselage itself goes onto the wing unit. Okay. Uh, it's tricky trying to get this pamphlet right. Now. Right, then the tail wheel goes on, radials that go on to the bottom part there, and the domes, and then obviously you've got the airspeed indicator which goes on. The bottom of the fuselage, upper air indicators, etc., and navigator station uh, glass perspex goes on, radio aerials go on, props go on, um, exhaust goes on, which you can see there, and then you've got the choice of having the cargo door closed, and then you've obviously got the um, side part of the cockpit entrance i suppose goes in and you've even got the actual stairs which you can actually use to put on if you want this with it on the ground um or you've got the op operational door to keep open left open if you should so wish i might well do this version with it on the ground and i'm going to see if i can get some aftermarket figures of paratroops from lining up to basically go onto the aircraft so I'll have to have a look online. If anybody knows of anywhere where you can get these 170 second scale figures, um, who does them, just leave a link in the comments column, please. Thank you. Um, it's because I'm going to leave the cargo door bays uh, open as they're going to go into the aircraft. Uh, so there you go. And that is the assembly of your Skytrain. Now, we'll get on to the parts. This one is going to be the cockpit, so I'm going to have to cut this one open, I think. Let's have a look. Um, he says, famous last words, where did I put my scissors or knife? What have I done with it?
As usual, I'm well prepared for the video. <laughs> um, oh, here we go. Right. Let's have a look at the Perspex. Just peel it open. Good idea that they do this actually because it does actually protect the glass. As a pity other kit manufacturers don't do the same thing really. It's only Hobby Boss who does this. Um, there's so much so I can't get the damn thing open. Uh, <laughs> wouldn't you believe it? Hang on. Bear with me. There we go. Nice clear perspex, as you can see there. And that's your fuselage windows, landing lights, and then you've got navigators, bone dome there. And then obviously you've got the cockpit right there. Easy to mask as well by the looks of it. So there you go. And look at the panel line detail on it with the rivets. Very nicely caught there. Exquisite. And not an ounce of flash on this. Right, let's put it in there because I don't want to get it to get scratched or broken. Put it back in the bag. There we go. That goes in. Right, next section is going to be some of the wheels and parts of the engines, I think. Just bring out one sprue so you can have a look. There you go, guys. Again, nice crisp level of detail, uh, even on some of the actual engine pistons, which you can see there for the Pratt & Whitney engine. Again, even with the engine, nice level of detail on it, which you can dry brush on. Uh, then you've got the familiar paddle blades uh, for the props. Again, nice level of detail there even on the wheels, but sadly they're not weighted, so I'm gonna to have to get some aftermarket for that. Then she's got the air filter there. Some of the undercarriage units, which you can see. Nice little crisp level of detail again. And then you've got your control yokes here. Okay, as you can see, they're there easily built up, and then obviously part of the actual exhaust there. Very nicely done. Right, pop that in. All right, next bit is part of the internal, internal workings like the bulkheads, etc. Again, I'm just going to have to open it up with a knife. He says, There we go. Now, look at that. Absolutely exquisite detail, and again, nice bit of weathering you can put in there with chipping, etc. And that should come up lovely. And again, no flash anywhere. And here's part of the bulkheads there. Um, this is part of the seat uh, frame, which you can see. Again, lovely detail. We've even got sculpted um, embossed. Um, seat belts which you can see on the seat and again part of the internal workings even on the bulkheads the details are exquisite beautifully caught nice little wash there that will come up lovely and even you've got the seating there beautifully done beautifully caught and i have to say i did have a look at this kit first hand and again where you've got the navigator station the framework on here exquisite absolutely exquisite it really is a lovely looking kit so i think this is going to be an enjoyable build actually and again even on the cargo door you've got a nice little bit of detail there as well they really have done research unfortunately there's a little few um world seams on here but you're not going to know it's those by the time they're down on the bulkhead floor so there you go but nicely caught all the same And then we got, oh, hang on, let's drop something. Oh, sorry, part of the edge brass, sorry. My head was in the way there. And then you've got the wings here. 
Again, quite a large wing spare for 170 second. I mean, there's my arm. That's my arm. So it's quite a wing span. It's half my arm. <laughs> Up to my elbow. There you go. Now we'll get it out of the bag and you can have a closer look. Okay. Oh, he says. There we go. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Again, you've got some nice panel line detail, which is going to come up well, even for pre-shading, even the rivet detail on it. You can see that. It is beautifully caught, and even the actual stress skin on the elevators are uh, beautifully caught. There you go. It is beautiful. I think this is going to be a beautiful kit when it's built. And then you've got some internal workings on the undercarriage bays there. With the wires and also uh, with the engine fire uh, walls as well very nicely caught there look at that isn't that gorgeous uh, so yeah there you go it's the other side again look at the detail on that superb um, even the tail planes are very well caught as well and this is the lower part of the wing Again, nice level of detail there, especially with the riveting, which I shall get up a little bit closer so you can have a look. Beautifully caught. This really is a really lovely looking kit, I have to say. It could be an easy match for the old Airfix ones at the moment. So there you go. I think this is a fairly new kit anyway. Um, pop that back in the bag if I can get it back in there. Oops. Okay, hang on. Easy to get them out, not so easy to get them being. Oh, hang on, here we go. Right, that's that. And again, you've got the engine cover here. Lovely detail, even with the riveting. Beautifully caught. Really nicely done. And then we've got final sprue, which is the fuselage shaft. Oh, he says. And that's kept in bubble wrap, which is a good thing. And again, look at the detail on the fuselage. Beautifully caught panel lines. This really is going to make a lovely, lovely kit. And then on the opposite fuse side, fuse large half there again, lovely panel line detail, beautifully crisp. It is a lovely looking kit. So yeah, I think this is going to build up lovely. And then you've got the internal workings here. Uh, this is the upper part of, which goes on the, um, um, uh, windscreen on the top of the actual column in the cockpit again you've got your rudder levers here actually i'm surprised they didn't do it in etched brass but if i get it a bit closer to the camera you can see there you go okay and even the cockpit panel nice level of detail there but i'm getting an aftermarket brass one which is pre-painted so there you go then you've got your um Navigation state um, radar there. And this is the upper part of the roof unit on the interior of the fuselage where you've got the lights. Okay. And navigator's desk there. Uh, so, yeah, all various lumps and bumps, etc. Let's have a look at the interior again. Nice level of detail. P, they got these weld seams so you don't mind you can get them these weld seams you see them there they can easily be sanded down or filled in so it's not a problem but again the internal working rib detail is beautifully caught it's really going to come up well even the tail wheel if i can get it into shot is nicely done as well with the spring there beautifully caught and again on the other side of fuselage very nicely caught very subtle so there you go 
So that's the last brew. Um, and yeah, it's going to make a nice size kit even for 172nd. I mean, I did build um, an old monogram 148th kit of the Skytrain, which my dad gave me uh, because he, he, he just couldn't be asked to build it uh, many, many years ago. And that built into a lovely, lovely kit. And I mean, that was fairly big, but even 172nd, this is going to be a big beast. Um, and then finally, oh well, I say finally, uh, where's that etch brass bit gone? Where did I put that? Hell, bells. Oh, where's here a minute ago? Oh, here we go, here we go. Right, this is all your etch brass detail for the actual uh, entry ladder, uh, uh, staircase there. And then you've got the radiate, radiator grills there, etc. So, yeah, there you go. Nicely done. And then last but not least, we've got the decal sheet. Uh, now, I'm not sure if Cartograph are doing this. Oh, hello. Let's get some tape off. There we go. Hang on, let's peel that back. So you're going to have a look at the decals. There you go. Little bit shiny. Not sure if they're going to bed down that well, so it's just as well that I've ordered some aftermarket. I don't know what Hobby Boss's decals are like, but there's a little bit of a film there. I don't know if you can see it, which I'm a bit dubious about. So mm, I think this is the only thing that's going to let the kit down. Um, so there you go. You've got your, your version for your D-Day um, <coughs> bird or you've got your Chinese bird. So there you go. That's the only thing that I think is a bit disappointing is the decal sheet in this. Um, as I say, I can't judge because I don't know what they like to bed down unless anybody else has got any comments and leave them in the comments column. Uh, in overall, this does look a lovely, lovely kit to build. Uh, what it's like to build, I don't know because um, I've never built on a Hobby Boss aircraft yet or a Hobby Boss kit yet, to be honest. Um, I've had a few mustache, unfortunately, a lot I've sold on, but there you go. Uh, but all told, as I say, it does look a lovely, lovely kit. And, um, yeah, if you want to go and get a nice C47, don't want to pay the expensive price of what the Airfix kits are basically asking for. This is a viable alternative, so there you go. And at the end of nearly what's been 30 minutes on this video, um, there's one thing I will say, if it hadn't have been for all those guys 75 years ago, we wouldn't be living the lives that we've got today, which we take for granted. So we owe them a big debt, especially the guys who never came back. So there you go. And lest we forget. So there you go. Anyway, that's it for now for this special D-Day uh, inbox review. Um, carrying all those great builds out there, guys. I will be doing an update on the Leopard shortly. Uh, just to let you know how that's going it's slow progress but slowly but steadily we're getting there um, and then probably I'll move on to the V1 Dio anyway that's it for now guys so until the next time get kit crazy happy modelling and I will speak to you soon bye for now